sometimes when you build these things are going to happen as you can see there's damage to the cabinets that one's actually one of the better ones well i am up here today because we are supposed to have our cabinets delivered and we've gone ahead and cleared this space we made sure we had these two sections and that section over there painted so that we can get the cabinets situated over here and I wanted to get the refrigerator in. I went ahead and unboxed the refrigerator. Unfortunately, the delivery driver just called me and said that he was about an hour and a half away and said he was in an 18 wheeler. Well, you ain't getting that 18 wheeler up here and if you do, you're never getting it out. So they're gonna have to move those cabinets to a box truck and send them up here later this week. I figured since I already took the refrigerator out of the packaging, I'm gonna go ahead and get it connected because I'm tired of buying ice and this thing has an ice maker on it. sure there's something I'm not doing right. Let me read the instructions. No, go this way to be on. So push it that way and it's on. Apparently, I'm not smart enough to own this refrigerator because I can't figure it out. Well, I only had to read the manual two times but I think I have it figured out. Hey, hey, look at that. That's pretty nifty. Now, it's got this cool little thing inside of it that you can stick fruit or cucumbers or something like that in and have fruit infused water. I won't ever do that, but my wife most definitely will do that. I know it seems silly for somebody to be so excited by a refrigerator, but we've been renting for four years and we haven't had our own appliances and our own things that we choose. And for the last year, we've been renting a nice house, but it has a very small refrigerator. This is pretty exciting. This house build has occurred in our spare time over the last three and a half years. When we started the house, we still had children living at home. And lots of times, there wasn't enough of us to go around. We had to divide and conquer. One of us would take care of family obligations, while the other one worked on the house. This reality has probably existed for different families on different continents since before recorded history. You go to work, you bring home food, or you hunt and gather. You cook and clean and attend to the needs of your children, and you build your house and work on your farm. And because you can't get it all done by yourself, you split it up, and you get it done as best you can. Some things never change. After our children moved out, we quickly became used to the luxury of focusing our energy only on what we wanted to do. But life is complex, and recently we've had to return to the pattern of splitting up chores. Our youngest child, Lauren, returned home to recover from an acute illness, which progressed and turned out to be much more serious than we initially thought. And we had to focus our attention once again on protecting and caring for one of our kids. So while Dufana is driving Lauren around to doctor appointments and helping her to navigate these new issues, I have begun putting my time in on the house at night and increasing the pattern so that we can get it done and get ready to move in. Having a refrigerator on site is a huge bonus. 
It means that I can keep drinks and lunches cold without spending money on ice every day. I can even keep some perishable items at the house and make a quick sandwich when I want one, saving us time and prep work when we come up there to do work on the weekends. And having drinking water available is a big plus too. In little bits and pieces, this place is turning into a proper home. When Jafan is available, she comes up and helps. And that's important when you need a dance partner for the intricate ballet of pushing furniture and scaffolding and equipment around the room. I have mentioned it before, but one of the best things about working together and building a house together is all the opportunities that we've had to talk. And right now, having an opportunity to talk about the things that are going on and process the anxiety it gives us and the additional concerns that we have stacked up on top of the deadlines for the house is a great benefit to both of us. Sometimes the work is a little break from the rest of the world. Pretty happy. Yeah. And <laughs> my wall. Didn't you say anything about my wall? I didn't say anything about your wall. Good. I'm just trying not to fall off this thing. Don't do that. Let's... I'll insult your wall later. <laughs> Good help is hard to find. I made her nervous. Hmm. When your painter has performance anxiety, it might be a problem. This room seems to have taken forever, but like most things, if you don't quit, eventually you'll finish. Very little of this process has been easy. And I can't say that it's always been enjoyable, but when it's done, you're always happy. The cabinets finally arrived, but unfortunately, even before they were opened, it was obvious they'd been roughed up a bit. Some were upside down, and boxes were torn and battered, but I was still hopeful. Alright, so this one is actually upside down. There's a little beat up on the side. Acceptable. So, uh, the policy is you can send this let's, let's, let's see what the others look like since they're only three next to each other, and I may be able to just stick it in the middle or something like that. All right. Um, and I'll place it up with two by four or something underneath, and it'll never make a difference. My hopes were quickly dashed. There'd been a lot of impact to the sides of the cabinets, doors were knocked out of alignment, and some of it looked like it wasn't assembled properly. It was certainly a disappointment. Alright, so corner cabinet. Doors don't line up. That is not something that can be adjusted. There's no adjustment room 
in these fixtures for that. The face is cracked right there. That's not at the joint. That's not something that can be glued or fixed. That is a break uh, on the side of the carcass. You got a break in the plywood. In the back of it, you got a chip. That one's going back. So, sometimes when you build these things are gonna happen. As you can see, there's damage to the cabinets. That one's actually one of the better ones. <laughs> the, the wood is split, the face, the pieces of the face are split. There's breaks in the carcass. Um, when I saw the first one that had that, I thought maybe I could, uh, I could just hide it because it was a break in the carcass down at the bottom. And I figured I could just put it in the back next to the others, that same size, and it would be fine. But as you start to look at it, you've got problems there where it got smashed on the, on the way over here. And then you have problems of assembly. This is, this is actually just laziness. Um, this is pretty bad. That just does not line up. The, uh, the way that they put the doors on there, it's just, it's, that is laziness. And we're paying just too much money for that. And while I am on a timetable, I ain't on that hard of a timetable that I gotta take something like this. Not when you spend thousands of dollars. So we're gonna send those back to the factory, contact the people, and we're gonna get the order sent back out to us. So, Things didn't quite work out the way we were hoping for when the cabinets came today. They were all pretty busted up. There were some issues I also saw with uh, the assembly on a couple of them. So I talked to them about that and they're doing a whole new order and shipping them out. They're gonna expedite it and supposedly we'll have them next week. So I'm gonna cross my fingers. We'll move on to do something else. We have plenty of painting to do inside the house tonight. We think we're actually going to be able to finish this main room. This one last middle section of this room has to be painted. And when that is done, this entire room has been painted and we can move on to the bedrooms and the pantry and the bathrooms. That's very exciting. Yeah, and uh, I hate painting. And I'm glad it's almost done. Seven years ago, when we were getting ready to buy this land, if we told anybody what we were planning on doing, we got that look. And sometimes they came right out and said, you guys are crazy. While finishing the paint in the main room, Jafana asked me if I thought this day was ever going to come. Now, I bought my first house when I was 33 years old and a single father with an infant. The house was small, less than a thousand square feet, but it felt comfortable and it fit me. Three years later, I was married with a blended family and I needed a bigger house. And we bought a much bigger house than I had ever thought of owning with three bedrooms and a pool. The house wasn't gigantic. It was 1800 square feet plus a bonus room over the garage. But at the time, it didn't feel like it should be my house. Talking about it felt pretentious and embarrassing, like I'd been caught at a party that I wasn't invited to. I look back now, and it gives me a little chuckle because I know that it was all just my perspective. That was 20 years ago, and for a myriad of reasons, I have no such feelings about this house. From the beginning of this build, I felt confident that we were going to succeed. I wouldn't say that I was always chest-thumping confidence, but I wouldn't say that I was obsessed with doubt either. There were some missed nights of sleep, but even when I took a day off because I just didn't feel like doing it, I couldn't shake my mind away from where I felt like I should be, which was back on the build. I'm not a very good builder. I'm certainly not fast or efficient, but I am lucky. I'm lucky to be healthy enough to do the work and to have somebody by my side who's willing to see this sort of thing through with me. And maybe I'm lucky enough that we are the right kind of crazy to be able to pull this off. <laughs>